Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, or good evening, or good something else, depending on where you are watching us today. My name is Brad Keeler. I'm the director of the Geo Institute. This is not Director's Cut, so I will not tell you that it is Director's Cut. We have something different for you today. Every year, according to our bylaws, the Geo Institute is required to do an annual business meeting, sort of like a town hall for our Noon. membership. For many years, we did these in person at Geo Congress. Last year, of course, we live streamed it, and we decided to do the same thing this year. Not because it was a huge hit, but because as many people watched it then as did in person and the format worked really well and we're going to tell you a little bit more about that in a moment a couple of things that you might want to do if you don't subscribe already to our youtube channel you should click subscribe and you should click get notifications you will then be notified every time we post something new to our youtube channel which is frequently so today, what we're going to do is myself, our president, Bob Gilbert, the rest of the GI board is going to go through a little bit of a state of the institute, if you will. We will talk about finances. We will talk about programs that we are running. You will get to know our board members a little bit better. If you have any questions for us during this session, the thing to do is put them in the chat box to the right of the window that you are watching this in, and we will relay them to the board. We will address all questions and answers at the end of the presentation. So with that out of the way, I will now turn it over to the 2021-2022 Geo Institute president from the University of Texas at Austin. It is Bob Gilbert. Thank you, Brad Keeler. Do you have our presentation ready to go? Welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time to sit in and hear how we're doing and, and ask your questions. This is our annual business meeting. <laughs> and the first thing we're gonna do is talk about our board. So I'm Bob Gilbert. I'm currently the president of the Geo Institute board. And we have Sissy Nicolau, vice president. Sissy, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Sissy Nicolau. I'm the vice president of the Geo Institute. And I'm very pleased to uh, be seeing you through this event and talking about our the state of our business uh, as an um, institute. Yeah. Thanks, Sissy. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Jihan, our treasurer. Okay, this is Jihan. This is a very proud moment to introduce myself as the <laughs> professor at the University of Kansas. Yeah, the champion of basketball. <laughs> Thank you, G. <laughs> and then we have Dominiki Asamaki. Hi, everybody. I'm Dominique Smaki from Caltech, and uh, I am excited to be here and share with you the latest, the greatest about the GI. Uh, Stan Boyle uh, is also a member, and he couldn't be here today. I thought I might introduce him myself. Uh, and Ellen? Thanks, Dominique. Helen Robinson from GEI Consultants. Very excited to be part of the meeting today. And Helen is our newest board member, just getting started. And then we have our past president, Jim Collin. Thanks, Bob, the oldest board member. And I'm really happy to be saying this will be my last business meeting that I attend as a board member. <laughs> but I'll be glad to answer any questions I can uh, today. Thank you. And then we have Mark Belouz, our ASCE appointee. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Belouz. Uh, I'm an international consultant, spent uh, more than half of my life in Texas, and I love it. And uh, I'm happy to be part of the board and ready to answer any questions you have. 
Thanks, Mark, and thank you to the Board of Governors. We really appreciate all the service that you put into the organization. Can you go to the next slide, Brad? The heart and soul, though, of the GEO Institute really is the staff. So we've got several staff members here. We have Brad Keeler, our director. Brad, do you want to say a few words? <coughs> People hear from me quite a bit. I don't know that they need to hear anything else, but uh, I do appreciate the audits that you've given to the staff in the past year. We, we really appreciate that. We have a great team here. We've built it up over the past several years and we're a machine. I like to tell everybody. I got to say that in a meeting today. It makes me really proud. So we, we've got a great unit here. On the call today, it's just me and Erin Harover, our board and program coordinator. That is her title, but she does a lot more than that. She does a lot of our social media. She's the producer for all of these live events that we do. She handles our awards program and kind of whatever else we throw at her. Graphic designer, you name it. Uh, Christina Scott is our technical manager. She's the liaison with our 60 chapters and our 20 technical committees. Tatiana Vlasova does all things digital for us. She runs all those emails that you get, our e-updates and our e-blasts that come on Wednesdays. She runs the Cross USA lecture program, and she does a lot with student programs as well, especially at Geo Congress time. Lucy King is our conference manager, so she's the one, if, if you enjoy what you eat at our events, Lucy's responsible for that. If you enjoy the way they're laid out, if you enjoy anything about the logistics, Lucy is the one who's responsible for that. And Elizabeth Casino is our customer service specialist. She's with us 50% of the time, and she does more than 50% of a person's work. She's also instrumental in our work with uh, the International Society, with ISSMGE. We'll hear a little bit more about that later. So thanks, Bob. Thank you, Brad. Thank you to all of your staff. We're really, really lucky to have such a great staff for the GEO Institute. Next slide. So here is a snapshot of where we are. We've got about 12,000 members right now. Um, the membership has been flat for about the last five years and going down a little bit. Some of the biggest declines, I think, were associated with the pandemic, but we're expecting the membership to start growing again this year and get back on an upward trend. Um, our membership very much goes with ASCE membership and their membership has been declining for a while now. So uh, they have hopefully hit the trough. They member Their membership increased just a little bit last year. So I'm expecting that ours will start to increase. And there have been a lot of efforts both at ASCE and in the GEO Institute uh, to make it as valuable as possible for our members so that we get our membership going back up again. Uh, one of the proudest things for me about the GEO Institute is that when we created this organization 25 years ago, it was really dominated by academics. And we have really increased the diversity of the people participating in this organization, which is important. The only way you can be a leader is if you're representing all facets of the GEO profession and doing that. And so that's been something that continues to, to do well. And in terms of being more inclusive, we can always be more inclusive. We still don't really represent the United States in terms of gender or other attributes. Um, and so we're working as hard as we can within the GEO Institute and within the profession to make sure that we are inclusive of everyone who wants to be a part of it. Next slide. Our strategic plan, we're gonna be looking at this again this May, every five years we uh, go through this exercise uh, right now. This is our strategic plan, and I don't expect that it's going to change significantly when we look at it in May, but we want to be leaders. Uh, we want to promote value. We want to give something to our members that they get back um, so that if they want to be leaders, they've got opportunities to learn how to be leaders. If they want to improve our profession, they've got opportunities to do that. If they want to collaborate, 
with others, we're giving them opportunities to do that. And there's four areas that we focus on. One is collaborating uh, externally and promoting value and leadership in public policy, professional project, uh, professional practice and project decision making. The second is to lead in providing technical and career opportunities for our members. The third is to promote new technology and innovation. And the last, and this is where the staff are so important, is to provide excellence in delivery of services. So we're going to talk about each of these facets of our strategic plan today. Next slide. In terms of collaborating externally, we've been doing a lot of work uh, with the American Society of Civil Engineers around licensure and post-professional engineering credentialing. Um, one, one example of this is that we've worked over the last six years now with the Structural Engineering Institute to help them in their desire to have specialty structural engineering licensure at the state level, but also to make sure that that structural engineering licensure does not inadvertently uh, take away from our ability to practice as geotechnical engineers and our ability to collaborate with structural engineers as geotechnical engineers. So the Oak Brook Accords was one formal step in the direction of making sure that we were supporting them in a way that, that helped our profession and didn't hurt our profession. And most recently, we worked with the Structural Engineering Institute on an ASCE policy statement, policy statement number 524, um, to give it some teeth, first of all, so that ASCE is, is putting some support behind post-PE credentialing, like our board certification in geotechnical engineering, and also to put ASCE behind our desire to make sure that we're not inadvertently overlapping when we have specialty uh, post-PE credentialing so that it's not uh, preventing people who are able to practice in a specific specialty area from practicing because of the way the, the licensing or the post-PE credentialing is being implemented. And that's going to be an ongoing uh, activity. I think we're going to constantly need to be working with our uh, profession all outside of geotechnical engineering to make sure that we're all doing that together to promote collaboration. We also have a an ongoing uh, task force that Billy Camp is a part of and many others within the Geo Institute together with the Structural Engineering Institute to look at a guidance on foundation design. Uh, this would be something that would be uh, supplementary to the International Building Code and the idea if it's successful would be that this would be something that's referenced by IBC and therefore, it's it, we have better ability to control what's in it, uh, very much like ASCE 7 for loads is referenced by IBC, and then you can put what you want in ASCE 7. Uh, the intent or the hope is to have that same kind of thing for foundation design. Next slide. Uh, we also want to do what we can to provide opportunities for technical advancement. Um, we're proud of our conferences. We just had our state of the art, state of the practice conference in Charlotte in 2022 last month, which was very successful. Uh, we've always been known for high quality publications. Uh, the Geotechnical Journal is the leading journal in geotechnical engineering around the world. Geostrata is the envy of all the other institutes within the American Society of Civil Engineers um, and a wonderful uh, product that we have for our members. Uh, and we're always looking for providing opportunities for members to network and get to know each other both locally and nationally and internationally. Next slide. Sissy. Um, sure, I'll, I'll talk about organize, organizational membership. Um, we have more than 70 organizational members and um, the um, 
benefits include um, reduce a uh, reduced fee to any national GI event for one person, a dedicated section uh, for OMs, which is the organizational members, and news in every Geostrata magazine issue, um, discounts in advertising in Geostrata, um, opportunities uh, for serving on the uh, council of the organizational members, other discounts on geotechnical publications through ASC, and participation in student recruiting fair and reception of the annual uh, Geo Congress. Um, uh, you can join as an organizational member and you can reach out to uh, Brad or any of us uh, on the board or officially to Eric Armson. But what I wanted um, to say, and actually it's on behalf of Stan Boyle, our board member who is in charge of this activity within our board, is that the most rewarding um, activity and benefit that our organizational members um, state that they get from uh, being an organizational member is the activities and the student fairs. And um, the members are thinking of expanding that in future geo congresses and other events to have more students because they find this very rewarding. And we are very proud of this part of, of the GI. It's always been very successful and engaging. Thank you both. Thanks, Sissy. And the next slide, Jim Collin is going to take over. Thanks, Bob. Um, so you heard Bob talk about our membership uh, in one of the earlier slides, and it's been relatively flat. But uh, as you'll see on this slide, both our graduate student organizations um, and our local chapters have grown significantly over the last decade, almost at 20% a year. Um, I think this is partly due I think for the graduate students who are our academic colleagues that are on the G and uh, GI members uh, starting new new student chapters. I think that's been really great. Um, as far as the local chapters, if we go to the next slide, I think uh, the the reason for the growth in our local chapters stems back to about a decade ago when uh, when the board consisted of uh, Billy Camp. Alan Cadden and Cord Wisman, and they they had a specific focus on local, bringing value to local chapters, and that was probably, if not the beginning, at least uh, a critical time for our local involvement committee. It's uh, currently being chaired by Jeremy Verner. Uh, he's doing a great job. There are, I think, eight members. They cover uh, eight the eight regions in the country, and they are the liaisons to all of the local chapters. Uh, they <clears throat> they bring value to the local chapters. They assist them at getting speakers, at uh, kind of learning the ropes of, of being a local chapter. So they've they've done a really great job for us. In addition to that, the the LIC also uh, picks the Cross USA lecture, and we, as you can see here at the bottom of the page, we've had outstanding lectures. Currently, we have Silas Nichols with FHWA doing the lectures for this year. And we're really pleased that uh, Tim Stark will be our cross-country lecturer for 22-23. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Jim. Now we're going to talk about our student programs, and Jihan is going to take over. Yeah, Bob, thank you. Uh, students are the future of our profession and also the future of our institution. Uh, we have a really excellent uh, student organizations. They are very active to organize events, uh, such as the regional and the uh, national geo competitions, include geo war, geo prediction, geo poster, geo video, actually there's another one, geo ship. And uh, we also have organization member student grants, and uh, student participation in the conference is wonderful. And the uh, average number of students participate in the geo congress is about 400. So I, I calculate the percentage, basically it's about 30% uh, participant at the conference are students. And also about 40% of the student members participate at the conference. This is wonderful for our future, uh, our profession. And we also have a student participation fund and basically used to help 
uh, support our students uh, to carry out those activities. The GR member contribution are vital to the health of our student programs. Uh, we really thank the uh, past president, Professor Ed Kavazanji, uh, made the uh, 125K uh, match grant, uh, grant in the summer 2020. Since then, we raised the money from uh, different contributions, including you, uh, maybe in the audience, and uh, through uh, 2020 and 2021, and this year, 2022, even at the GEO Congress, we raised good money. I think we are very close to match the fund uh, Professor Kavazanji provide to us uh, 120K. We are still asking you to provide the contribution. There's a new things for this year, basically 96 club. Uh, if you give uh, $96 and you will get a special, a limit additional Geo Institute gift as shown here, basically uh, Dr. Carl Tasaki's uh, uh, Bob Head, uh, uh, the statue and also the 25 years uh, annual uh, uh, year for the GI. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, G. And next, we're going to talk about some of our international activities and collaborations. And Bob Holtz and Mark Belouz are going to take over. Go ahead, Bob. <coughs> yes, thank you, Bob. And uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, the first three bullets on this slide, I think. Uh, say it all as far as our our international activities with the International Society for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering, ISSMGE, are concerned. Cost 20 bucks a year and uh, this pays for a lot of student activities and uh, technical activities associated with the International Society. If you go on the International Society website, just Google ISSMGE, you'll be amazed at the number of technical committees they have. I think it's something like 32. And uh, some are directly connected to our technical committees and some are kind of off the wall, like uh, old cities and, uh, and monuments and things like that. Uh, if you are interested in participating on any of those, please let me know. Uh, I'll be very happy to recommend you for membership on a ISS MGE technical committee. The fourth bullet has to do with the next international conference of which we are proposing. And I'll turn it over to Mark Belouz, who really spearheaded that effort and uh, put, the, put the flesh on the bones uh, for that uh, proposal. So, Thank Mark. You. Thank you, Bob. Yes, uh, we are very happy, uh, the Geo Institute of America, to launch this proposal. Uh, and we really look forward to oh, winning first and then hosting you in uh, Washington, D.C. It's a very exciting city. It's the capital of the USA. Easy to connect in, to come in and to visit other cities. The most important thing in this conference is the theme where we say it's uh, geotech on Earth and beyond because this conference is going to include geotechnical engineering uh, outside the Earth, like Mars and the Moon. And uh, we hope we win. The, the proposal is going against another proposal from Europe, Austria to be exact, and 90 countries are going to vote on who is going to be the winner and where the conference will be in 2026. It's going to be the 21st International Conference for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. Uh, the vote is going to take place in Sydney, which is the 20th ICSMGE, Sydney, Australia, on May 1st. So I hope uh, we will win this one. Next slide. I might mention, Mark, uh, when was the last time the conference was held in, in North America? Yes, we should uh, we should mention that it's been like yeah yeah about fifty years yeah so it's time to come back to the USA <laughs> now the next thing is that I want to mention that uh, uh, Mark is going to be running for the presidency of ISSMGE 
Um, we've not had an American uh, president since Jean-Louis Briot, which was probably 10 or 12 years ago. And so we're very excited about Mark's uh, chances. He's got a lot of competition, uh, but uh, I think he's a pretty strong candidate. And if you have any questions about his candidacy and, and so on, uh, I'll be happy and he will also to supply you with a short CV and some other details of his plans for the society. Yeah, it's, it's all online. I just want to mention we missed a point about the importance of ISSMGE. One of the main things they have there, the International Society, is the foundation. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's ready, always ready to support young engineers and students uh, to go attend conferences worldwide. I encourage if you have in, if you're in touch with your students or with young members, engineers around the world, I encourage you to tell them about it, let them apply. And uh, those who have some money, please donate to help the young, uh, the youngsters and the future of this profession. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Bob. OK, next slide. Now we're going to talk about work we're doing to improve the state of practice and innovate the way we practice engineering. Sissy. Yeah, so um, we have a particular focus and we have been working for years on the board on promoting new technology and innovation um, uh, with um, bringing um, awareness and making focus specific events for new materials, new technologies, new means and methods. Um, but also recognizing and uh, enhancing leadership of the geoprofessionals and in their role uh, within this uh, time of full of innovation. And of course, new project uh, delivery um, methods. So some of the exciting actions that we have been taking uh, that are very much uh, active and exciting um, are the IDEA um, uh, initiative, which is um, Highway Innovations, Developments, Enhancements and Advancements. That's the idea for evaluation of new technologies specifically for earth retention system. Uh, we have um, uh, la launched our geotech tools online. We have almost 50 and we are counting and more coming up. And uh, we have established a new board level committee, uh, which we call INC uh, for Innovation Committee, uh, which is the new ideas and innovation technical committee that we are very excited for and uh, had the chance um, to uh, meet with a lot of the um, initial members on this committee in uh, the GEO Congress last month. So our um, INC committee um, uh, has been years in the making. It's a definitely uh, a need and a desire for all of us to have that. Um, our objectives include promoting innovation through activities of the committee to advance the geo profession, uh, but also to increase the impact and influence of the geo institute by embracing and implementing new technologies in design, construction, maintenance, and reconnaissance of geo hazards. But also, we want to branch out, understanding that these efforts are multidisciplinary. We want to enhance collaboration and interaction and exchange of ideas uh, with other ASE disciplines. But also we have a plethora of uh, international and national groups that work with technologies, a lot of which um, have many of GI members leading them or being part of them. So we want to connect GI and make GI members aware of what is out there in the innovation world. Uh, so some of the United States uh, known uh, activities and associations 
our gear and rapid both response to extreme events, but also our uh, sister committee in the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering and a lot of other groups. Um, uh, we want, um, of course, to um, uh, engage with tech companies that may not be aware uh, that um, their tools can be used for us. So it's a two-way street that can also increase revenue and exposure and connection of the GI to companies and suppliers that we were not connected before in the past. Thanks, Sissy. Now Don Miki is going to talk about our technical committees. So uh, the Geo Institute members from all over the world uh, work in committees to develop and support member activities on national and international levels and share technical development, share technical knowledge, publications, webinars, conferences, and collaborate with other organizations. And Sisi walked you through some of those activities and seek new and innovative ideas to help the GI members advance in, in, in our profession. So the, the, the focus, uh, the focus on specific technical areas are our uh, 20 technical committees. And, uh, that you can you can see the list here. These are uh, this, this, uh, I'm not going to walk you through, but you you can you can navigate to the through our new updated website to the corresponding pages of the technical committees where you can find information about their activities. Um, for example, uh, uh, sessions that are being organized, supporting and participation of the committees in conferences, preparation of uh, products like webinars, and or they provide each committee provides the membership with technical support, including support for chapter sections and branch level activities. Uh, you can sign up. Uh, the previous slide had a, um, a little cloud. Uh, you can write, yeah, you can in, uh, navigate to the committee of interest and uh, enter your email and subscribe to receive updates and newsletters from the committees about their activities and upcoming um, products. And you can also reach out to the leadership of the committee uh, to participate uh, in uh, the activities of the committees that you feel passionate about. Thanks, Tom Niki. Of course. Jim. Brad, can you leave the, the second page of committees up there just for a minute so that we get people the opportunity to see the rest of the technical committees? OK. Uh, next, we're going to talk about some of our initiatives. Jim Collin, take it away. All right, thanks, Bob. Um, We've already just touched on, uh, Sissy, I think, touched on the IDEA program a little bit. So this is one of the two major collaborations we've done with FHWA over the last, I don't know, five or six years. And this, uh, the IDEA program, as Sissy indicated, is a, a program that actually replaces the high-tech evaluation that was an ASCE program with FHWA to evaluate earth-retaining system technologies. Um, this has replaced and streamlined that. Um, it's a program that we've had now uh, ongoing for, this is our fourth year. Um, we have a committee that reports directly to the board on this. Um, we have completed seven system evaluations um, over the course of the four years. We currently have three underway. We have a couple in the pipeline. Um, I think it's... Uh, we're seeing great success and continued collaboration with FHWA and state DOTs on this initiative. Um, we currently on our website, if you if you go to the special projects, the IDEA webpage, you'll see that uh, the seven evaluations that have been complete, you can actually download directly a PDF of each of those evaluations um, to see what sort of uh, review has been performed on these systems. I think it's very valuable. Um, we've also added to the website now uh, requirements that the state DOTs have for approving 
these uh, proprietary systems for use in their state. So that's all available with the IDEA program. One thing that we, uh, when we talked about staff, we, we left out Jeff Greenwald, who is uh, our project manager for both the IDEA program and Geotech Tools. He is not full-time at ASE, but he's uh, been on board as a consultant uh, and has managed both of these programs uh, very nicely. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so Geotech Tools is, is the second of these collaborations with FHWA. And uh, many of you have maybe heard about Geotech Tools in the past. Um, it was a, a huge undertaking by three universities to kind of capture the state of practice and state of art of ground improvement a decade ago. Um, um, it was managed by Iowa State, uh, Vern Schaefer. Vern is still involved with us with Jeff Greenwald, um, and we have taken over the, the ownership and management of Geotech Tools from FHWA. Um, and if we go to the next slide, and this, so again, this is a web-based uh, program that uh, is in our special, pro uh, special projects. Uh, you can go, and if you know a certain technology that you want to look up, you can uh, go right to a table of uh, technologies, or you can do a selection and guidance system for a specific project. Um, I think some of the things that are maybe new that have been ongoing since we took over Geotech Tools. One, um, the TCC, Nick Puttiman, um, has been instrumental in working with our technical committees to not only update technologies, but implement new technologies to Geotech Tools. And this is uh, extremely critical for us to keep this uh, very valuable tool update and current uh, with the technologies. So my hat's off to the technical committees and Nick for managing that. Um, in addition to that, we have a collaboration with DFI and their technical committees working with our technical committees to add new um, technologies to Geotech tools. So we're, we're extremely happy to be collaborating on, uh, with them on Geotech tools. And then finally, um, we couldn't do this without sponsorship. Uh, there's some cost involved with managing and adding these technologies. And so on the, on the front page of the Geotech Tools website, we have a list of the sponsors that are, are so critical to the success of this program. I think that's all I got, Bob. Thank you, Jim. Okay, our last thrust in our mission is to provide excellence in the delivery of services, and that's through conferences and publications and other methods of communication. Uh, and making sure that we're managing the finances that make all of this happen. So that's what we're going to talk about next. Next slide. Here are the board level committees that we have to help us in delivering services. Um, you can see some of them that have been there a long time, um, like the Technical Coordination Council that started with the beginning of the GEO Institute. But then there are other um, initiatives that we would have under board level committees like the innovation effort that uh, Sissy talked about. It started here. So these are opportunities to get involved in our profession and in implementing services to support our profession. Next slide. We've had a number of very successful conferences. When we talk about finances, you'll find that uh, where we can make money is generally with our conferences. It's the thing we have the most control over. And we've also been very successful with conferences and partnering with other organizations. So you can see the attendance. That's what's on that y-axis of our uh, annual conferences through time. And we, when we partner, we can get upwards of over 3,000 people in attendance at our conferences and for our geo congresses which are mostly just Geo Institute um, focused are getting up over a thousand attendees now, like we had in Charlotte last month. Next slide. Sissy, you wanna tell us about Geostrata? Oh, absolutely, Bob. Well, um, Geostrata is one of the most exciting things that are going on with the GI. It's my personal opinion, but I think a lot of you uh, probably agree. It's our bi-monthly uh, member magazine that has um, 
high quality feature articles in a theme for every issue and um, um, has includes preliminary programs of conferences. It is sent to all um, professional and organizational members. It has updates of our community and um, uh, some of the highlights are um, permanent columns or activities that are going on there. One of them is the geo cartoons that I think all of us uh, read every um, two months. Uh, some specific theme, um, one page uh, or um, a little bit more than that on as I see it on particular aspects that are important in our profession or in the particular issue. And we just connected um, through the leadership of um, Jim Witham, who has been the chief editor and really is a dedicated member of the GI, uh, who um, has of the highest priority his um, volunteer work with the magazine, is connecting our innovations um, committee with an um, ongoing uh, article that you will be seeing very soon coming on every issue of Geostrata or in innovations that we appropriately, um, uh, Jim gave it uh, the title Ingenious. Um, so it's, uh, it's, as I said, a highlight. Uh, personally, I can share, if I could, Bob, um, that I got drawn to getting more involved with a GI uh, because of Geostrata. And uh, by being a contributor and also reading it and seeing that these articles are to the point and also they are uh, they are short, but at the same time they are very high quality, very well peer reviewed, and I think we should all be very proud to have Geostrata uh, with um, as one of our main activities in the GI. Well. Thanks, Sissy, and thank you to Jim with you. It, it would not happen without him. We're very fortunate. Okay, and last, we're going to talk about finances. Uh, here are our expenses. We've been uh, generally growing in activity, which is a good thing. Um, we have increased by 30% the amount of money that we're putting back into our technical coordination council activities. So things that technical committees are doing, we're providing more funding for them to do that. Uh, and we really rely heavily on our staff here to help us in managing the money and make sure that at the end of every year, we're hopefully close to zero, if not a little bit above zero. Next slide. That dip there is the pandemic, in case you were wondering. Um, we were very lucky with the pandemic because in 2020, we finished our uh, Geo Congress in Minneapolis right before the world shut down. Um, and we then did not have a major expense in 2021. And then we were lucky again in 2022 that things opened up in time so that we could have a successful conference in Charlotte last month. Uh, here are our, our reserves. So this is what we have in the bank. And we generally wanna keep this up above about $500,000. We look at our expenses and look at other metrics, but we, we got down a little bit lower than what we would feel comfortable with. And so we've been working over the last four years really to build our reserves back up. And we're starting to see the, the benefit of that in that we now have more money to do things like support our technical activities. So with that, we are at the end and we are happy to answer your questions and, and wanna thank all of you. The, the GEO Institute is all of the members of the GEO Institute. So. We're really grateful for all of the service that everyone puts into this organization. Thanks. We actually have no questions in the chat, just a few comments. Um, can I'll read one of those off. Uh, one thing I've learned recently is the value of a strategic plan include not only a mission and a vision, but also a statement of why we are who we are and do what we do. And suggest the board consider this question in the review of the strategic plan. Thank you. We'll do that in May.
So this is kind of the last call for any questions, if anybody has anything, or did everybody do such a wonderful job with the presentation that there are none? Either way, we appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, we do have one from an old friend from Pat Fox. Hi, Bob and board. Any update on past discussions of reorganization of the GI? Yes, that's actually what we are talking about in May. So in terms of our strategic vision, we're really looking at implementation and what we can do to, to better implement our strategic vision. So there are some things, you know, I'll give you one example. We're really trying to be more transparent about how we are selecting uh, people for leadership positions and people for awards. And one example of that is the Terzaghi Lecture. We're really looking for uh, nominations from everybody. You can go to the ASCE website and solicit and submit a nomination for the I'm going to phone, but come on in. And that is a process that we're going to follow going forward. So this isn't something where you email members of the board. This is something where you go through ASCE that then goes through our awards committee, uh, like we do with all our other awards. So we're really working to, to be better about how we're making decisions in that it's transparent and it's hopefully as objective as possible. Thanks, Pat. We miss you. We do have a couple of positive comments on here. A thank you for all. Thank you all for all you do. Oh, we got another question. And any, uh, this is from Milton Gomez from Eric's. Any programs to bring young members uh, more involvement in the technical committees? Do you want to fill that one, Dominiki? Brad, can you repeat the question? Are there any programs to bring young members uh, more involvement in the technical committees? Uh, I think all technical committees are striving to engage uh, younger members through their activities. So each committee has their own activities, whether it is through the through webinars or through the um, uh, uh, competitions uh, at the um, at the conferences. So I don't I don't I don't know of any umbrella type engagement, but I do know of uh, uh, that each each uh, each committee is uh, it's try is trying to engage younger members through local chapter engagement too, as well as uh, student competitions and events at universities. That is a great question. It's something I think that we can be more intentional about. We have so many students that participate in our competitions and go to our congresses, um, and we need to figure out how to transition them into being professional members of the GEO Institute. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bob, could I add, and Dominiki, could I add something on some very recent um, activities that I think are very relevant? Uh, one, uh, as Dominic mentioned, uh, we have um, webinars that we are trying to engage technically all of our uh, younger members, but we have a particular activity that was um, uh, in initiated by our student leadership council and younger uh, member volunteers for um, having a, in, the, in our continuing education committee um, a GI student research webinar series uh, where current or recently graduated students in our community can share and showcase their research. And they already have a, had a super successful webinar, so they are very psyched about continuing that. And the other thing that I cannot not plug in again is that by default, our innovations committee has appointed or invited members. We're about 50% younger members. 
uh, to be honest with you, you know, I don't understand all the words that they are saying, and that's not because of my English, it's because it's new technologies. So we have um, a very, uh, very engaged uh, younger members. And I think one of the incentives we had to create that innovation uh, committee and new ideas was to give leadership opportunities and support our members early on. And, and the other thing I think that we did not mention in our conversation today is that ASCE has established an award that is for earlier career professionals. It's not for the younger, younger uh, members and, and, and students, uh, but we thought that in our process of looking at our awards, that there is this mid-career level of members that are now going to have the opportunity to um, be nominated for the Prakash Award, which is an ASC level award. Uh, and you can see that on our website starting next year. Thanks, Sissy. So we did have a couple of other ones here. Um, one that I missed earlier was how do you see lessons learned about remote meetings and remote learning affecting future GI programs? I think like the rest of the world, we're going to take advantage of the good parts of it. Um, hopefully not rely entirely on it, but it's uh, allowing us even even our board meetings, even if we do it in person, sometimes people can't for a variety of reasons and it allows us to maintain that continuity and have them still participate. So I would expect we're going to do more of it, hopefully in a complimentary and a good way. But does anyone else want to jump in? G, do you have anything to offer there? No, not for me. We also had a follow up from uh, Milton Gomez about what about an organization wide mentoring program? And this is a good opportunity to say that a lot of the things that you might look at GI offerings and say, oh, that's missing. Part of the reason is because ASCE might offer that. And in this case, that is where I would direct you with the mentoring program. ASCE has a much larger, more complete mentoring program than GI could ever dream of putting together. <laughs> they have a lot more resources to put into that than we do. And, and so there is an ASCE wide mentoring program. And we are ASCE. Very good point. <sighs> So that seems to be about it. Fantastic. Uh, Want to thank everybody who uh, tuned in today to watch this. Tell your friends if they missed it. This will be archived, of course, on our YouTube channel. We have all kinds of other great content on the channel. If this is the first time that you've stopped by, don't make it your last. Award lectures, director's cut, Geostrata Extra, there are a lot of good things to watch up there. Stop sleeping and spend 24 hours a day watching our content. That is what I urge you to do. And I did, of course, change into my University of Michigan uh, hockey sweater here while the presentation was going on. We will be cheering for them at five o'clock today as they face their foe, the University of Denver in the Frozen Four, and then move on to beat those people from Minnesota. Aaron Budge, I'm looking at you if you're out there. <laughs> But thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. And again, if you have any questions that you didn't get to ask today or anything you didn't see in the presentation, definitely go to geoinstitute.org. You can direct those to us. We'll be happy to help you out. So thanks a lot. Thanks to all our board members and to all our members for another great year. And may we have another one in uh, 2022. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>